newsletter that we just were talking about yep. before we got on air. I found a hard work time. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's kick it. Blink a blink. Is there a theme song for this? There could be. Could be. Blink a blink a. Your eyes are purple. Okay. okay. Every every week, Anne and team um, deliver one of the best and only Python hardware newsletters in the world. Thousands and thousands of subscribers, you send your um, projects and more this week. In addition to Circuit Python 9 release. Actually, it's 901 where it was since this was published. Yeah, there's 901. Lots of bug reports coming in. Keep sending them in. We know that people are actually starting to use nine. Uh, we're taking feedback. We're updating things. It's software. Numbers are meaningless, but still, yeah. uh, try out nine. Okay. And then um, this week, we wanted to talk about... This is cool. Teeny Sweet. Okay. So, Micro Python. Um, so, one of the things is, is, this is like a throwback. So, when we I tried the original Micro Python, one of the things that I thought was so awesome about the Pi board was that it showed up as a USB drive and you could like save files to it. And I was like, this is so cool um, that when we were doing our Micro Python port support, we, you know, we wanted to add Micro Python to all of our hardware and we started porting it over. Like, one of the things I told Scott, who was, you know, the, the one lone lead developer, I said, we have to have this capability where you have native usb support and i was like i also wanted i wanted like midi i wanted hid so keyboard and mouse because that's one of the things i loved about arduino but it was really hard to use so um one of the really cool things that we were able to do is tack who works at adafruit has this big project called teeny usb and teeny usb is you know basically the idea is to have a usb stack that is universal for host and device that works with any chip and we needed this because historically the way every chip would work is every company would have their own usb stack and it would be completely incompatible with anybody else's and so the pi board was an stm32 and that supported usb device but like no other micro python board did um, and like to add support was really complicated because again, it was like every stack was its own thing. But with CircuitPython, we early, we very quickly moved to having, I think we initially, the first, first release, like 1.0 used the SAMD21 native stack, but then we immediately like, we're like, oh my God, this is going to be impossible to maintain. We moved to TDUSB and that's why in CircuitPython, pretty much every device that has native USB support then you will get keyboard, mouse, MIDI, um, USB disk, USB, a second serial port. And now you can do custom HID devices too. We have a project coming soon, which is going to be a custom HID device, which is kind of neat. All because we have teeny USB universal across all of the CircuitPython ports. And what's great is I love it when we do something and then that stuff ends up going back into MicroPython because it's this cool ecology. Like MicroPython does stuff, we do stuff, we share. We go back and forth. So MicroPython, because they have added Teeny USB support for so many of their ports, including the RP2040, which is using Teeny USB, they're now supporting native USB devices as well. And so one of the things that I think people really wanted for the RP2040 was keyboard support. So you can act like a keyboard. You can now do that thanks to Teeny USB. Thanks, Tech. All right. Oh, so good. Good stuff. All right. So check it out. You can um, get this every week delivered at adafruitdaily.com. We have a completely separate website. We don't have spam people. We don't sign up for newsletters. It's on adafruitdaily.com. You have to go there and sign up for it. And it's delivered every single week to your inbox.